Welcome back to the channel. It's Chad here with Sinister RC, and today I have my A979B, and I think this is part seven of this build. And today we're gonna be concentrating on links. And I got these links here from Sheragoo, and they come with the provided screws and everything you'll need to redo your camber and your steering. See, and I've done my others like this. This is the A959A. It's just a 396.4 volt, but I do have links in here to kind of trip up that camber. See how square that is? For this one here, kind of towed out, and we can fix that. This one's the same way, I got a dead square. So, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna get this out of here. I still haven't mounted my ESC because I'm really not sure where I wanna go with it. I think it's gonna go right here just to get that out of our way so it's not flopping around so what I like to do let's just get it open get that out here put these screws out on my magnetic pad so I don't go nowhere and let's get these links out oh I think screw better Set this aside right here, just like this, so I can get these out. And see, these are just turnbuckles. I got them in titanium, like my center plates, everything kind of matches a little bit. What I like to do here is, because I've done this a few times, is I like just going one by one, we'll measure them out. And I'm gonna start out with these back ones here. Just pop these links off. You look, see, you can see some of these are like it looks like they're all exactly the same length. One of these two are touch shorter, so I'm gonna use those for steering links. And these ones here, so what I've done in the past is I've just taken a caliper and measured these right here, straight across the top, and just try to match. The 4.9 we get close to you know where we're at so 49 millimeters 49.8 so I'll try to just bring it out evenly to 49.8 which we're pretty close let's see where we're at exactly yeah just gotta bring it out a little bit so what I do is I turn it oh yep yeah, this is the way it goes to go out just make a good turn there oops that is tight but Oh, I hate when they do that. There we go. So, these are kind of a tedious pain in the ass to get kind of going here, but once you get it, you're... okay, so we kind of brought it out. Let's see what happens here. So yeah, I gotta bring it down about a millimeter. Oh. Now let's see. 
pretty close. So I'm going to install it where it's at because we can always adjust it once it's in the car and it's kind of easier to do it once it's in the car. I just try to get it close to length and we'll go from there. And then if you notice right here, these center pieces have that little line in it. You want to lay that line the same direction all the way around the car. Let's say if it's out this way, you want to make sure they're all facing the same way. Point being is when you go to adjust these, when you turn it, they're all going to turn the same way to either toe in, toe out. And I like it that way myself. Start installing here. Ooh, I gotta get these guys out on top here. And these aren't always the easiest to get out once they're in there yet. We have to take the top off right here just to get this out. So I'll be right back and I'll get these removed and might as well just remove these two as well. I'll be right back. Okay, so I got that all removed. And what I had to do actually was I need, when I got the differential cover off, in order to get these two screws back in because of how big this motor is, it's just easier just to screw in your camber links. And it's just six screws back here. I loosened these here a little bit, but then I was able to lift you know, my differential out from underneath here. Let's put it right back and let's reinstall this. Okay, so we are ready and I'm still dry fitting so I'm gonna dry fit these in here today and I'll probably after I finish this I'll go through and I'll take everything out and I'll start blue loctiting everything that needs to be blue loctited. So there are doggy bones here. And we'll slide those up in there like that. Line that dog bone up. And let's screw through here. And you see, see how these are pointed up, so we're definitely going to have to tow out, but as you can see, if I push it forward, it's towing down here. Okay. Same thing on this side. Just kind of get them out there and kind of eyeball them, you know, when I, before I put them in the car, but you know, that looks fairly flat. And then once I get the wheels all on it, then we'll just do a true adjustment. Gosh, those look sharp. Let's move on the front. And I'm going to get these all removed real quick, and I'll be right back. Okay, I got my front camber ball joints out right here, and these ones here. These were a lot easier to remove, but I like to do them step by step, so I don't have to drop this dog bone this way. So I'm going to do these upper camber, and then I'll do these links here. And I've already kind of... Got them going, and I have my line shooting to the inside. These little lines right here, I'll push them to the inside. So,
Got a pretty good just eyeball them. Okay, let's get this steering make here, and these are pretty easy to do. We'll just remove all four of these and run them straight down. Okay, those steering links are out of my way. <clears throat> How far those got to go in? So these pretty much got to be run all the way in. That should be. Oh, these are gonna be off a little bit, I think. We'll run them all the way in. I ran into some issues on another one I did where I actually had to file these down a touch to get them to come in tight enough. Hopefully I don't have to do that here. Whoops. Just realized I stuck it in there backwards. I want all these, like I said, those little lines facing the same direction. Okay, so we successfully have installed tow and camber links, which will, you know, it's going to straighten my wheels out. So let's get these wheels on and I'll get all adjusted out and we'll see how flat we are here. It looks pretty good right now. Looks really good. Pretty sharp looking too. Okay, got my wheels on and actually it looks really good other than, you know, she's pretty square. Now you're going to want to go back and, you know, tighten these up against here after you get done adjusting, however you do it. What I like to do is just get them snug right here. Grab a pair of pliers like this because I don't have little teeny wrenches. I'm just going to tighten these together. Whichever way it goes to tighten. There we go. Okay, so this one here, same thing. Gotta hold my little angle pliers here. Gotta hold these pliers. I'm just kind of tighten them together. See, and then they're tight there and it doesn't allow it to back off. So I hope this helps. These um, little cars are so upgradable and I love them so much. 118 scale is probably my favorite scale to do. I have a couple more things I'm gonna do with this and uh, next will be my cooling system and possibly brushless. I don't know if I'm gonna go brushless. I am a fa big fan of the brush motors and you know not changing much. But yeah, these 118s are my faves. I have, you know, three of them here, different models, but they've all pretty much carry the same parts. And I love them. Now I can just interchange as I want to. But this carbon fiber A979B is probably my favorite build. And it's super light. It's as light as the stock frame. These metal chassis are super heavy, and I do not recommend them. And I may even go back and change this guy out to a carbon fiber, because it is, it's pretty heavy, and that's why I've taken the aluminum links and everything else out, so we'll see. Thanks for watching, I hope this helps. If not, I just hope you enjoyed watching the build, because I've had a lot of fun doing it. Please like and subscribe.